So I went ahead and bought myself a Quest 3 to try out for all of my productivity work and several other miscellaneous things. Now, is the Quest 3 actually a good enough device to be considered as human augmentation? Well, I'm going to go over that in today's video as I'm going to focus more on the productivity things instead of things like gaming as my particular interest was mainly the pass through ability on this device. And to get things going, I think I really just want to show you how it is inside of the VR headset. So let's go with that first. All right, so here I am inside of the VR headset. You can see I've got pass through on. You can see my entire desk. You can see all the things around me. And I mainly have been using it with hand tracking. I have barely touched the controllers. And so that is what we're going to be focusing on today. So you can see I've got the screen over there. And what I'm going to do is launch Immersed. This is how I've been using the VR headset for productivity things. And you'll see why I'm using Immersed shortly so here immersed is loading and and <laughs> here we go so it's already come up with all of my additional virtual monitors but what I want to do first is turn on pass-through mode so that I can see my surroundings so to do that I can hold up my wrist you can see I flip it up and then I can click mixed reality and now I can see mixed reality so here we are and what I generally like to do is move my screens to where I have the middle one in the center here got one on the right and I got one up there and then a vertical monitor on the left hand side here. So one thing I do like to do is move it a little bit closer and then I like to lock my hand. So in Immersed it's pretty cool because you can do your ring finger and your thumb and it locks it to where now you aren't able to touch or pinch anything inside of the VR. So this is great so that you don't accidentally move a screen, make it bigger as you can do all these things here. Um, or and cause any issues so I like to just lock my hands here and immersed is great at that this also has a menu that you can tap open and with the menu you can drag around and move so I'll put that right there and then I'll go ahead and turn off um, my ability to use my hands so let me go ahead and set up an environment that I would typically do so here's an example usually sometimes i'll have a screen on top this will probably be something like code that i am debugging or um not or just running in the background something that i'm not actually focused on anything that i'm focused on i'll have on the main screen right here so that it's a little bit so that my head is level and it's not looking up or to the right or to the left and to the left i'll have some other screens or other applications in this case i've got a terminal window and then i've got um, you know obs running of course and then on the right hand side here, I usually like to have my file explorer and my file browser. So I've got a total of four screens here. And what I could do here is move the screens around or make them flat. So let me just show you that real quick. So there's this option here where I can make them flat. So now the screens are flat and I can actually just drag this um, slider right here to change how flat they are or their angle. And if I go back to curved, I can now change how curved they are. So here we go. There's that. And so I generally like to leave it at curved. But in the case that you want to move the screens around, you can actually detach screens. So let me close out of that um, by doing like click to click here to move. And then you can drag it out of the box, which if you take a look, if I try to move the screen here, there are four boxes that I can move it into. Move it down here to the left and these two on the side are already all taken. So if I want to make it custom, make this one a little bit closer, I could slap that there. And then now that this is separated, I could actually make this one flat. So in the case that I wanted a flat screen along with a curved screen, um, I could do something like that. So. Here we are. And so there is almost an endless amount of things that you can do with this. But for me personally, I prefer just to slap everything onto the same area. And that's how I've found to be working the best for me here. So the next thing is how good is the readability? Do I get headaches after a while? In the beginning, I did get a little bit of, um, I guess, motion sickness, a little bit of headache or soreness, I guess, from looking at the tiny text but it's not that bad. It's much clearer um, than the Quest 2. Originally, I had tried doing this with the Quest 2, but it's too blurry and it's not using the pancake lenses. Due to the upgrade of the lenses on the Quest 3, it is much better at being able to um, read smaller text. As well, I did go ahead and buy these Zenni lenses because I do need glasses. So this makes things just much easier. Uh, I don't have to put on my glasses to put on the headset. 
and the lenses are already attached. So I'll show that a little bit later in the video. But the quality for reading is good enough. I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but just look at this tiny text here. All of this tiny text I can read without issue. Um, if I wanted to make it bigger, which sometimes I do, I'll go somewhere like display settings, change it to something like 175. So this is what I might do if I want to have the text a little bit bigger. As you can see, um, as you can see, everything is just bigger in general here. Now it's up to everyone else individually to determine whether or not this would make your workflow a little bit more efficient. But I generally like to have a bunch of screens. I normally operate with two, but with this, I can operate with four. The cool thing about this is that I could actually detach my physical monitor, just have one monitor and then augment it with additional digital monitors. If you take a look at the workspace I have set up here, the top monitor and the monitor on the right, those are virtual monitors. And the one in the middle and the one on the left are monitors I have in the physical space. And so using Immersed, sometimes I have had issues with the connectivity to where it is lagging a little bit, but right now the connectivity is perfect. Um, I am not really seeing any lag. There isn't much issue with that. Additionally, you could end up just connecting the headset to the computer, but I have not tried that option. Now, there are a couple of weird little things um, that do occur as you're using the virtual reality. Um, sometimes things appear to be shifting or shaking and you can kind of get a little bit motion sick with that. Um, and it's just a little bit uncomfortable. Now, I believe that might just be the headset trying to adjust itself to how everything looks in real time. It's kind of occurring quite often right now, which is kind of dizzying. So that is the one downside to using this environment. Just the biggest thing is that little bit of lag, that little bit of shifting and shaking. You can kind of feel a little bit motion sick if that is occurring too much, but generally it's not there. And it really only occurs if you're moving around a lot. So for this, me personally, I do think this is worth it. Like I said, the readability of this headset is much better better than what it was in the Quest 2 and I actually found myself being able to use this for long periods of time. The first week that I actually got this I was using it strictly for that week and then the week following to do all the coding stuff that I was that I was working on for my YouTube channel and it was just perfectly fine. And so for productivity work I do think it is pretty awesome. The only thing is that issue where it is shifting and whatnot. Now let's get out of here and let's go to the Quest 3 environment itself. And it's pretty easy to get out of this environment. You could simply just go to the menu and then you could go to quit and it'll quit out of this immersed um, screen. So here we are inside of the headsets native space. And you can see that um, I've got a screen here and that the cool thing about this is that this is almost like a virtual screen that you can touch and tap. So you can move it around and do things like that. However, what I found that I can't really do is use the headset and then also use a physical screen. I would say the quality in the headset is a is quite a bit more grainy than the output that it actually records. I'm not sure why. And as you can see, I'm taking a look at my phone. Um, I can read my phone, but it is a little bit uncomfortable. And sometimes if I'm using hand um, tracking, it kind of puts a virtual hand in front of my screen and it just causes issues like that. So I don't really like to use my phone or any other devices if I'm in the headset. I do find myself peeking through the nose hole, which is a, <laughs> which is what we used to do in the Quest 2. But productivity wise, I do think that if you're able to get used to this workflow, it does make things a little bit more convenient to be able to use multiple screens. Now that is dependent on person per person, but for me that actually did help. But okay, how about leisure? How about augmenting leisure time with this? So, so first I want to show you my favorite leisure time with this, which is a mixed reality app called Piano Vision. So it allows me to set up a piano and play songs with it. And this, if you want me to do a full tutorial on it or a full review of it, I'd be more than happy to because I personally really like this app. So I'm able to do things like this. Um, the song will start playing. Let me turn on the piano first. And then you can hear the song coming and then see notes come down kind of like Guitar Hero.
And I really like this because you can upload your own MIDI files to it. So in this song, it's split between left and right hands. I did have to do that manually myself in a MIDI editor, but um, this shows you what hand to use. And um, if you want me to do a full review on it, I'd be more than happy to because I'm pretty much using this daily, so it's pretty fun. How does YouTube work? YouTube is pretty simple. Um, you can go into the YouTube VR and it opens up an entire new app where you're kind of just immersed inside of YouTube itself. I personally don't like to use the YouTube VR app. I'm more of a fan of using it in the browser because if I open it up in the browser, I can actually drag another browser on the side here, open up a tab, drag it over here, and I can use this with multiple different um, tabs. Now I could select YouTube over here, and then I could do, I don't know, let's do like ChatGPT on this screen. So yeah, you've got different things that you could do here in the browser, which I like to do quite a bit. So let me go ahead and close out of that. So there's this orientation of the screens, and then you can also switch to another orientation, which I think is pretty cool. It's going to be the switch distances option. So now you kind of have the screens kind of more of like a theater style rather than like a tablet style or display style. Um, I actually do like to operate it like this because this is where you can use it as kind of like a touch screen. If you're watching videos in here, the quality is pretty spectacular. I didn't find much issues with watching video in here. It's kind of just like watching a phone for me. The other cool thing about this is if you're watching in video, you can also make it a giant theater screen. So here I am eating some potato balls while watching Marquis review the Cybertruck outside and there's a giant screen in front of me. Now, I don't recommend that you use the Quest 3 in direct sun. I don't think you're supposed to do that, but today was a little bit cloudy and overcast, so I was able to sit outside and get this little demonstration. So one thing that I do like to do on my leisure time in here is sometimes do a little bit of reading. So I can just pull up a side loaded app like this and then just, you know, do do reading and whatnot on on a virtual screen here. So all of this works just fine. I'm able to grab the screen, move it around, say I twist in my chair a little bit. I don't want to move away from my mic too much. Um, I can, you know, click on words and, and find like the meaning as, as I would normally on my phone. Now I've got reading on the middle area here. I've got um, sentences here. Um, and if I, and then I can, you know, hover and do something like that. I click copy and slap that into ChatGPT and then hold paste and then use my custom instructions to break down sentences like that so music reading ChatGPT, all of that is super cool and let's say i don't want to see my environment anymore i want to be more immersed well i can now enter immersive <laughs> so i've got my avatar over there um and then i've got my virtual world here so here are my virtual hands um, the finger tracking is kind of cool and I can do all of the same stuff that I would normally I can grab the screen and move it around or I can just you know go back into the real world so here we are here and using this for leisure has actually been pretty cool because I'm able to open things up like this and do a workflow what does get a little bit weird is sometimes it becomes off level. As you can see, the screen is kind of tilted here. So I can try to do recentering and it kind of helps out a little bit. Um, but as but sometimes when I move it back out and then move it back in, it seems like it loses kind of that um, that level. Now, outside of my room, I've used this for virtually everything else as well, too, from cooking with things like peeling a potato while I'm also watching YouTube right above me on a virtual screen to making coffee with a gigantic screen next to me as well. And then to things like, you know, doing laundry, brushing your teeth, even using the bathroom. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's kind of weird. Just a bunch of other miscellaneous things around the house. I've even used it a little bit while working out, but this I don't really recommend unless you're using some type of workout app. If you're basically just using as pass through lenses, working out probably not what you want to do with it. Now, in my usage of it throughout the month, I wouldn't necessarily replace real life interactions with slapping a headset on and then doing them. 
um, I would much prefer to, you know, use my glasses and see things just because the video pass through quality isn't quite there. It's way too grainy um, and it doesn't look like you're seeing through your eyes, which is what I would prefer for some type of human augmentation type of device that I can just slap on, see screens and so on and so forth. That is not the case here. It is a little bit too grainy. The other thing is the battery life on it isn't as spectacular as you would want it. It's about the same as the Quest 2. I was getting anywhere from an hour 30 to two hours of usage on the Quest 3 headset. Now there is one thing that I do want to talk about, which are the um, Zenny lenses that I got for the VR headset. I actually think they are pretty fantastic. They are super neat and I just kind of want to talk a little bit about them. So if we take a look at the headset, we have these two little lenses on here um, that I could just pop off. So they're pretty easy to pop off. They come off with a nice satisfying click and they're just these tiny little right and left lenses. So if you got glasses, this is actually really convenient because you no longer have to put them in here. These cost around 50 bucks as an add on. But if you wear glasses, I think it's completely worth it. Now to put them on, I'm doing this with one hand. Um, you just kind of place it on the lens and then you push down and it clicks in place. And once you do that, it is nice and snug on there. Um, and it won't be falling off anytime soon. Same thing for the left side as well. Now there is a little bit of an issue. You can kind of see that there is a little bit of oil there. That is from my nose bridge hitting the glasses. So that is one little bit of an annoyance is that um, it is a little bit close to your face depending on your facial dimensions. So what you can do is move the spacer a little bit with these buttons on the left hand side here, left and right hand side of the headset. Um, these are basically additional spacers that you can adjust to move the headset away from your face. So I don't mind it being on my nose that close. So I keep it at one to maintain the maximum field of view because I don't want to sacrifice my field of view as that's the main reason I bought these these lenses because I get the full field of view without having to give it space for my glasses. Now these Zenni lenses are the only add-on that I've gotten for the headset so far. Um, I might get a comfort strap but for me it's not that bad. I did get used to using the Quest 2, the Quest 2 headset strap and that one was just one strap over the head instead of that instead of this Y design that you have on the Quest 3. Now the big question is is it worth it for the price point? So in order to buy the Quest 3 it's 499 for 128 gigabytes that'll get you the lowest model for the Quest 3 compared to the two now around $249 Quest 2. And in my opinion, I would say going to do a starter headset and you want to be able to take advantage of the pass through. Absolutely. The Quest 3 is going to be the best option for you in this case. But if you just want to stick with gaming and all of those other things and using the headset without any of the pass through Quest 2 is still going to be your your main option to go to. I don't think the lens upgrade is worth that additional $200. It would be kind of just a nice quality of life improvement, but if you want to get the fastest chip, have the pass through, all of those cool things, the Quest 3 is going to be the best option and I do think it is worth it for that, especially if you can get used to some of the pass through quirks, like I was able to get used to it and I could actually see myself using the virtual monitors in the immersed environment if I really needed to. So if I didn't have two monitors, say for example, if I was traveling, I could just hook it up and have multiple monitors or if you even just have limited space at home it can augment your workspace in that fashion too but yeah that's my experience having used the quest 3 for about a month now and if you're considering buying one yourself i do have affiliate links down below in the description if you do want to help out the channel you can click them there and any purchases you make will will give me a little bit of a cut without any additional cost to you but yeah if you do want to see a review of that piano app or anything else in particular let me know down below in the comments and i can make a follow-up video on those or a shorts video discussing those but yeah if you enjoyed the video thanks so much for watching find anything useful like subscribe all that cool stuff if you want to become a member of the channel to help support my future upcoming videos as well you can join the membership there too and thanks to those who are already members of the channel so with that i will see all of y'all later